diving 10 years ago, and it was an experience which sparked a passion for the underwater world. However, it was only when I started talking to local community members many years later that I began to understand that connectivity between the ocean and the land or the people, whether it was learning traditional octopus fishing techniques or surveying fish catches or interviewing community members about their experiences, my interest in the ocean started to be joined by a fascination with that intersection between the environment and the people who rely on it. For the ocean, the land and the people are intimately connected. And here on Ata Oro is no different. I came here to work in January this year. And in my role as an educator, scientist and conservationist, my goal is to connect the dots between these interlinking issues. As conservationists, we're often motivated to solve a particular environmental problem. However, I believe it's only when we take a step back and take a more holistic approach that we can begin to succeed. When I first came to Aturo, I was struck by the natural beauty that surrounded me. The diving is stunning, and with some of the most biodiverse waters in the world, that's no surprise. And that feeling has never left me. As the seasons change, I'm constantly surrounded by new beauty. And I think my favorite so far has to have been the arrival of whale season. But as I began to familiarize myself with our local reefs, I couldn't help but notice the lack of big fish. On many reefs, groupers and other large predators are few and far between. These predators play an important role in regulating the ecosystem and fish which grow to a bigger size before being caught can produce far more offspring. But as overfishing removes this top end from the environment, the impact on the ecosystem and the fish populations as a whole becomes greater, which causes a decline in the fish stocks even further. And unfortunately, my impressions are consistent with studies on the subject and the impressions of the local community. As one person I spoke to said, we don't catch as many fish as before. In the past, you were lucky if you could eat all the fish you caught that day. So from a conservation perspective, this particular dot should be a relatively easy fix. Stop fishing the big fish. But the reality is very, very different, as people here rely on fishing to put food on the table and provide for their children. As my friend Estevo said, the sea is our office. We need to go to work every day. And here on Ata Oro, uh, fish is a really important source of protein. So a decline in fish stocks can have a direct influence on nutrition. And in the face of concerns over food security, specifically fish stocks, it's easy to get tunnel vision and think that the best way to solve this issue is to focus on the fish. However, in my experience, top-down approaches like this which focus on one aspect of a complicated problem are doomed to failure. It's only when we take a bigger picture approach that we can begin to see results. The thing that I have come to appreciate more, more than anything else in my time here on Atoro is the strong sense of community and family which binds everything together. And I really believe it's only when we take these values into consideration that we can begin to see tangible results from conservation. And the growing number of tarabandu around the island are a sign of this trend. In this particular context, tarabandu are areas which have been designated as locally managed marine areas, according to customary law. As our friend Neko said, having a tarabandu is important because I want my children and grandchildren to always have fish like I can see in the sea now. I don't want it to be lost in the future. These laws are driven by the community rather than centralized governments and are the products of hundreds of years of tradition. Tarabandu are laws which are deeply rooted in family and community ties, and they're often taken more seriously than official law. Disrupted during the conflict, they're now enjoying a resurgence and are increasingly being used for marine management. They work because they are deeply rooted in the community's values and they make sure everyone's voice is heard. However, they require hard work, dedication, and sacrifice from the community in the short term. In the words of Johnny, uh, he said, we all want Tarabandu here, but based on the culture from our ancestors, we believe that it will be stronger if we do it in the proper way. 
These fishermen are looking to the future as more and more tarabandu are added to the network of protected areas which surround this island. As they set aside their fishing areas, they're looking for other options of how to provide for their children. And that's where alternative livelihoods come in. The Homestay Association here in Beloy is a great example. Eight families have opened their, their homes to international volunteers and staff working with Blue Ventures. This is an, a business model they'd never used before, and less than a year after they started the initiative, they're already reaping the rewards. One member of the association said that the main benefit of the homestay is that it allows us to take care of our family and all the income stays in the community. I've been lucky enough to live with one such family during the last few months in Beloy. Through them, I've been able to learn the Tetan language, settle into village life, and find my feet in a place far away from home. My Timorese family have provided me with the amazing t hospitality that's one of this community's strengths. And homestays are an excellent opportunity to create cultural exchange, which benefits both the host and the guest. One of the guests said that it was an eye-opening, immersive experience that will be one of the main things he looks back on. And along with the donations that snorkelers and divers make to the Tarabandu Fund, this homestay program is contributing to a growing nature-based ecotourism industry on Asa'uro. Research from Charles Darwin University shows that the communities of Asa'uro strongly support the development of community-based ecotourism in the future. However, they believe that it should be in the hands of the local community and the hands of local NGOs. And I firmly believe that it's only that if it's done on the community's terms, then ecotourism could be a valuable tool to improve community development and economic security. Not only that, but the benefits must go directly to the community rather than disappearing into the pockets of developers or investors from elsewhere. And to find out what this could look like for them, the Homestay Association from Beloy went to visit the Homestay Association in Raja Ampat, Indonesia. An inspirational experience which enabled them to see communities just like this one, which are succeeding in running their own tourism businesses. And after all, learning from your peers is, can provide a more powerful lesson than any classroom or training course. Estevo said of the experience, it was very important for us when the Raja Ampat Association told us that they started just like us, with no support. And now they have achieved this amazing success. That inspires me to keep working. So going back to our earlier dots, what brought us to ecotourism was that it's an alternative livelihood which enables us to pursue conservation strategies. So that begs the question, are those conservation strategies working? Are they having an impact? And that's where our international volunteers come in. So during their time in Timor, not only do they stay in the homestays, but they also learn how to survey the coral reef and seagrass ecosystems of Asa'uro. They learn survey techniques which are designed to monitor changes in marine resources over time, focusing on fish populations, coral reef health, biodiversity, and bleaching, amongst other things. They survey inside and outside the Tarabandu. So we hope that we'll be able to paint a picture of the impact that these refuges are having on the creatures living within their boundaries. And by combining this scientific data with local experience and knowledge, we can garner a better understanding of the state of marine ecosystems around Asoro. Anecdotal evidence alone is not enough to track a management strategy, but scientific surveys alone fail to take into account the rich relationship that the people of Asoro have with their marine resources. And bringing this one step further, we're now taking a community-bring approach to monitoring and mapping the seagrass meadows around Asoro. Seagrass is extremely important because it supports coral reefs and the associated fisheries, acting as a water filter, nursery, and food source. But it's also extremely vulnerable to many threats. By taking seagrass into account in our work, we want to take into account the connectivity between marine habitats. We also want to take into account the connectivity between management systems. After all, fish don't stick to the boundaries of the Tarabandu. And particularly as those Tarabandus are limited to coral reef areas, this is important. Our local and international volunteers work together to survey the seagrass ecosystem in Asa'uro so that the community can understand their resources 
and be better equipped with the knowledge they need to help them manage them. By doing this, they're able to improve their level of understanding and learn new skills that can contribute to their sense of ownership and capacity when it comes to marine conservation. So here we are, we've come full circle connecting the dots. What started as a concern over overfishing has gone through many iterations, from the ecological to the social to the economic and back again. And it's only by taking all of these aspects into account that marine conservation can be sustained. And the only way that you can do that properly is by listening to the community and taking their needs into account. So you might be asking the question, well, what, what will you do next? Where do you go from here? Well, I don't have the answer, the community does. All we can do is stay humble and listen to their voice. We want to find a way that we can move forward together, working to address their needs in a way that's compatible with their values, working together to achieve their aspirations. Thank you.